Hello fellow 3D enthusiast, my name is Ian, and today I'm going to be sharing with you how we can get this robotic arm looking even more like it's part of this shot. You'll notice over the hoodie there's lots of raindrops because I shot this when it was raining, and so we're going to be talking about how you can make some raindrops and slap them over top of the robotic arm so it looks like it actually belongs in this footage. Okay, so here's where we left off last week. We've got our motion tracked arm that if we render it out, is composited pretty nicely into the scene. But we can do a little bit better. So let's get to adding some rain in. I'm going to start by organizing our collections a little bit. Right now we've just got one collection and everything is dumped into it. And the reason why we need to organize our collections is because first of all, this one is very disorganized. And second of all, we're gonna want to split the rain and the robot arm into completely different layers. So it helps to be a little bit organized for that. So I'm going to start by selecting our camera and our area lamp, and I'm going to hit M and new collection, and I'm just going to put this into a collection called render, and that's just where I like to put things that have to do with the render. And now let's also create a new collection by right clicking up here, and I'm just going to name this one rain. Cool. So we have this one up here, which I should also rename to arm, arm, render, and rain. So just like this, if we started putting rain into the rain collection, it still wouldn't be separated from the arm. So what we need to do is add another view layer. Right now we've just got one called view layer. Let's rename this to arm and hit this paper button over here to add in a new one. And I'm gonna rename this to rain. So if we flip back and forth between these view layers, nothing really changes. And that's just because it's a duplicate. So I'm gonna to go to the rain view layer and uncheck the arm collection. And we haven't put anything into the rain collection, so it doesn't look like there's much going on here other than the render. But if we go back into arm, another thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is uncheck the rain collection so that doesn't show up in this view layer. And now when we render, it will render the rain separately from the arm. Cool. So let's go into the rain view layer for a second here and into the rain collection and actually add in some rain. So from the camera view, if we play the animation forwards, you can kind of get an idea of the effect we're trying to duplicate. Here on the hoodie, you can see the rain that was in the actual shot, and we're gonna wanna recreate this and kind of paste it over top of our robot arm. So to do that, I'm gonna set up a particle system. Let's go Shift A and add in a mesh plane, and I'm gonna make this a little bit narrow. So scaling it down on the X axis, and then I'm also going to scale it up on the Y axis, so it's kind of long. And I'm gonna grab this on the Y axis and move that towards the camera. And then going back into camera view with numpad zero, we can grab this and put it above the area where the robot arm is gonna be. And I'm just gonna rotate this a little bit on the Z axis as well and scale it down on its local X axis by going S and hitting X twice. Cool. So now we've got kind of a narrow plane right over where the robot arm will be. Let's just play the animation to make sure that it's actually over top of it. I'm gonna move it slightly to the right because our rain is gonna be coming in at a slant. Okay, that's pretty good positioning. Now the other thing we're gonna add is an icosphere. So I'm gonna go Shift A, Mesh, Icosphere. And the cool thing about icospheres is if you go down here, we can turn the subdivisions down to one and that makes it a very simple object that we can duplicate a whole bunch of times without making our render times very long. At this point, I'm gonna save my file real quick so we don't lose anything. And let's just grab this icosphere and move it off to the side off camera. Cool. Let's go back to the plane and work on some particle settings. So I'm going to go over to the sidebar here and in the particle tab, I'm going to hit the plus button and add in a new particle system. And if we just play this forward, you can see they're kind of bouncing up and then falling down, which is close to what we want, but we're going to add in some edits here. First of all, the lifetime by default of a particle system is 200 frames and we've only got 117 frames in this animation. So I'm gonna set this end frame to be 117. And then if we play it forward again, you can see we've got this huge long line of particles falling out of the camera view, and it takes them a long time to despawn. So what I'm gonna do is set the lifetime of each particle to be about 10 frames. And now you can see they die pretty quickly, but that's all right. We're gonna change that so that they die beneath the camera view, but just off the camera view so that we're not rendering a whole bunch of particles that are out of the camera view. Okay, so let's work on this bounciness we see going on here. I'm going to go into the velocity tab 
and change the normal, which is the force that they have as soon as they spawn, to be negative 7 meters per second, which seems like about the average raindrop speed. <laughs> I did a little bit of research, and that's kind of what I found. It depends on the size of the raindrop, but for our cases this will be fine. And now you can see they're really shooting downwards. Cool. Okay, so to see things a little bit more clearly, let's actually set this icosphere up as our particle. I'm going to go down to the render settings, and down here we're going to switch render as from halo to object. Then we've got some settings here. Let's just select the dropper tool and select our icosphere. And now we've got icosphere's rendering. We could take this guy and scale it down a bit, just so it's a little bit smaller but maybe not too much just yet. You can see that these are going straight down, and if we look at the hoodie here, you can see in the actual footage, our raindrops have a bit of a slant to them. And so if we go back to our velocity tab here, you can actually see there's different axes that we can add some velocity to. And so if we add negative two meters per second on the X axis, let's go negative two. Yeah, there we go. Now it's coming in at a bit of a slant. So one thing I'm going to edit before we get too far into this is I'm just going to grab this and move it to the side a bit on the x-axis because now that our raindrops are slanting, they were kind of missing the mark. But now I think it's lining up pretty nicely with our robot arm. Okay, a few more settings in the particles. Let's switch the number to be 10,000 instead of just 1,000. And now you can see it's really bucketing down. And I think that'll help match the actual footage a little bit better. One more issue that we have is that if we go to the start frame, there's no rain there. And if we go a few frames forward, you can see the rain start to fall. So that's great. But on the first frame, we already want there to be rain there. We don't want it to start up. So in the emission tab here, I'm going to set the frame start to be negative 10. And now when we start on frame 1, the rain is already going on. So that should be about it in the emission properties. Down in the velocity, if we wanted to add a tiny bit of randomness, I think that could help a little bit with the believability. If we put this at like a 0.1, that way the rain isn't all going at the exact same angle. And I'd say velocity is good. And if we just play through this here, I think we've got something that looks pretty nice. So I'm ready to cache this out. If we go into the cache tab, we can hit bake. And the reason we bake it is just because if we start rendering and editing things, it will have to re-simulate the particle system every time we do that. And if you're happy with your simulation, like I am, it's a good idea to just cache it out, and you can always come back in and delete the bake and edit some things and rebake it, but I think this is pretty good. Okay, what else do we have to work on? I think if we change the scale of the render down, that would be good, so they're a bit more raindrop sized. You can get them pretty dang tiny here. For scale, you can see this raindrop here. So actually, let's even go a bit smaller. Another thing we want to check in the render properties is show emitter, because if we don't check that when we render it out, you will see the plane up here, which we don't want. But hey, I'd say our particle system is looking pretty good now. Now if we hit F12 here and render it out, immediately we just see the end result of the composite, but if we go up here to where it says composite, we can switch it to our view layers. So let's look at the rain view layer and see what we've got going on here. I think this is pretty good, but there's one very big problem, and that is that these are all just a bunch of dots. And raindrops are kind of this shape, but when you try to get them on video, they look streaky because of motion blur. So let's go ahead and add in some motion blur. Over in the render properties here, we're going to go down to where it says motion blur, and I'm just going to check that box, and that should just add in pretty nice motion blur for us. Ah yes, now we've got the streaks. Cool. One more thing that would be good to add some realism is to add some depth of field. So I'm going to select our camera here, go into the camera properties, underneath background images, here it is, depth of field. We can check this box, and let's just add in an empty real quick, going shift A down to empty, and I'm going to use a plane axis. And this is roughly in the position of our robotic arm, which matches the focus of our original shot. So I think this will work pretty well for a focus object. If we select our camera again and go into the depth of field settings, we can just hit the dropper tool and select our empty here, and it'll be focusing on that. And now if we render it out and look at our rain view layer, you can see slot one is what I had rendered before the depth of field, and slot two, we just get this nice little change of the things in the foreground becoming a lot more blurry. And that adds a lot of good detail and depth to the shot. 
Okay, so we've done a whole bunch of work on this particle system, but if we render it out, you can still see it's not in the shot when we render it out. So let's do some compositing and add that in. Here is our node tree that we've been working on. And if you'll remember, this render layer right here is our robotic arm. And we can go control and spacebar to go full screen in this view. So it's pretty simple to add in the rain. All we need to do is take this render layer and duplicate it. And down here, you can see it's set to the arm view layer. I'm going to switch that to the rain view layer that we created. And let's add in a shift A, color, and mix node. And I'm just going to drop that there and drop our rain view layer in the bottom of that. And I'm going to switch it from a mix to an add, like so. Cool. So if we view this add node, you can see a whole bunch of rain plummets down right on top of it. Pretty cool. And if we look down the line, this is what we've got. You can actually start to see right over top of the robot arm, we've got our rain going on. And if it looks too intense, we can turn down the add. If we just look at this, you can see what that does by turning that down. That just makes it more transparent and a little bit less noticeable. So looking at our final result, we just kind of want to match that up a bit with our hoodie. And I think somewhere around 0.5, maybe a tiny bit higher, is probably a good value. But probably one is too intense. And you can just tune that to how you think it looks best. Now the tricky thing about adding rain like this is that it's kind of hard to see what it's doing until you actually render it out. So I'm going to give it a bit of a render here, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I rendered out a quick test render, and 0.6 was a bit too strong, so I turned it down to about a 0.4 value for add, but really that'll depend on your shot. But here's what it looks like, and I think that's pretty good. These are the kind of visual effects tricks that will be really useful for you, but aren't necessarily super glamorous. <laughs> Being able to integrate CG objects into actual footage is a really incredible thing to be able to do, and it'll make you a better visual effects artist. Now, speaking of which, couldn't ask for a better segue. If you're interested in learning more about visual effects in Blender, and specifically the topic of integrating your CG objects into actual footage like we've done here, I've created a completely free video for you. And in this video, yeah, I teach you to integrate your CG objects into real life footage. So if that sounds interesting to you, there's a link in the description. Definitely check that out, but hey, I'd say we're pretty much done here, so I hope you have an excellent day, and cheers!